In our final video in the Philippines, we went all out and rented a tuk-tuk to drive ourselves around Siargao Island. I can barely freaking switch gears. My palms are so sweaty from heat and probably nervousness. Driving the tuk-tuk was not easy, but we couldn't think of a better way to explore all the popular sites across the island. Do you need a ride, sir? There's no way I'm getting in that thing. All right, first thing here in Shargao is we're gonna hop into a tuk-tuk and go check out some of the sites. Look who's my uh, tuk-tuk driver is here. <laughs> it's Rebecca. <laughs> we just rented this thing. Let us show you around here. <laughs> okay, well, we got the rental. I got a short little five minute demo of how to drive this thing. <laughs> and then towards me is yep. gas. Yep. So I take off the brake and the clutch at the same time. Yep. Here we go. I'll give you a little catch. It is manual, which is not a problem normally. I drove manual. That was my first car. This, however, is not the same. <laughs> so I got this sweet little green bad boy right here. I'm gonna call it the green machine, Verde. Let's give you a tour. So if you're not familiar with driving a manual vehicle, usually you have three pedals at the bottom. One's brake, one's gas, one's the clutch. This, however, has the gas on the right hand and my left hand has not only the clutch, but also the gear shift. And then there's one brake pedal. It's a lot to think about all at once and it doesn't shift like a normal car would where you ease off the clutch and into the gas. It's totally different. So we're a work in progress. It might be a slow day, but we've got this. first requested stop is to grab lunch. So we're here at the food truck, which is just like a little taco shop. We kind of came here out of speed and convenience, but also because it was on our map and highly rated. So excited to try some fish tacos here. We'll also put a link to our map in the description if you're looking for an easy way to see what the sites to see, places to eat are here in Chargao. What are your initial thoughts, impressions? It's very slow. <laughs> I have yet to pass anyone. <laughs> and I can barely freaking switch gears. My palms are so sweaty from heat and probably nervousness, but also it's really hot here. <laughs> is it fun? It is fun-ish. Honestly, riding on the back of the motorbike is a lot more fun. <laughs> we have arrived. We're here at the Cloud Nine surfing area. That's gonna be the first stop on this adventure. We are not surfing. We're just gonna check it out, see what the view is like, and watch some other people fall. <laughs> not now, maybe later. I'm gonna leave it open-ended for the rest of the trip. So Shargao in general is a surfing destination and Cloud Nine is kind of the peak of that. The waves don't really look huge right now, but there are like a million people. And everybody you walk by asks if you want help surfing, surfing lessons, surfing rentals. So again, not gonna happen today, probably not gonna happen at all, but I don't know, maybe I follow up with this sweet clip of me shredding some gnarly waves or something. Kyle is, I was going to say attempting to surf, but he got up on his first wave. What the heck? The water here is so gorgeous. Again, another beautiful blue, just like we've seen everywhere in the Philippines. I'm in love, cannot wait to get in it at the beach. And right now the waves do seem pretty small, so I think it'd be really good if you were trying to learn. I feel like I would be more confident out here. They're not massive, but maybe with less people. On to stop number two of our journey. I'm gonna be honest, I definitely got the easy side of things. I could tell it's a little bit stressful for Rebecca driving. Mainly just shifting gears and stuff seems to be a little challenging. I'm just kicking back and relaxing. Our next stop brings us to this coconut tree valley where there are thousands of coconut trees behind me. It's really pretty to look over. 
Lots of traffic passing by, but it's gorgeous here. There are tens of thousands of coconut trees out there. A lot of them were taken out by the... A lot of them were taken out by the typhoon that came through a couple years ago, but you can see they're already rebuilding here in 2023. There's still a ton of tall ones and a lot of little baby guys too. But it's a beautiful view over here. In addition to the coconut trees, you have a great view of the river down there too. I don't know if it's the lack of clouds or just being in a different part of the Philippines, but it is toasty here. I am pure sweat <laughs> through and through. I know Rebecca talked about the car earlier. I've noticed a few new features. So I'm gonna give you the Pimp My Ride version if anybody remembers that show from the early 2000s. We we'll hooked you up with the ultimate lounge equipped with your own baby grand piano. Let's get it started. First thing you're gonna notice here is we have not one, not two, but three side mirrors on either side. You can see the front, the grill, you can look at yourself, you can look behind you. It's pretty top level. Now let's move around to the side here. As you can see, we got lots of sponsors here on our vehicle. Not only are we sponsored, not only are we sponsored by Guapitos here, but if you come all the way around the side, you can see that there's an Apple sticker too. They're a big sponsor of ours. So shout out to <laughs> Steve Jobs and thanks to Apple here for uh, putting that on us. Also on the front, we got a little bit of extra flair here. The grill, you can see nice and chrome shined out. We buffed that before we got in here. Got a Batman signal on the front and check out these horns. Those are from the authentic 1968 Tuk Tuk they first brought to Shargao. So this is really legit, very original. I also wanted to point out on the side here, we got a little bit of flare, a little bit of flash. You got some things sticking out on the side. These look like they're building materials. They're not. These are all for style. It really sets the tone for the uh, for the Tuk Tuk here. So definitely impressive. Now where the real magic happens is on the inside. So follow me. Inside the vehicle is where we really shine. In the back, tons of storage. There's at least three square feet back there. Tons of storage. Look at this backpack. Fits however you want it. We also have handles here. This helps not only to you know rock the boat a little bit, but if you wanted to hang out on the outside and feel the breeze through your cool hair, you know that's something that you can do too. And then, if you want to get the party started with some music, we have not two, not one, but zero speakers in here. So unfortunately, the speaker is not going to work this time. But we're going to figure out an option for next time. Now I know what you're thinking. What happens when it gets a little bit hot out here? You know, bright sunny days in the Philippines. Well, if you get a little parched. We got you with a cup holder. That's custom work for you. Make sure that you're staying cool and hydrated throughout your tuck truck drive. And then, you want to take a private ride. First things first, pull your sign out. Bet you didn't even know we had that. You're going to put that right on the front of the vehicle. I'm sure it'll stick somewhere. And then, we have two shades we can pull out. They don't get used very often, but you can see we need to protect my identity. Obviously, we're YouTube famous. We just pull these out, kick back, relax, and that's Pin My Ride. Now, I know I talked about it in the Pin My Ride edition that we got all these mirrors. To be honest, they don't do anything. When we need to drive, I have to stick my head out and make sure there's nobody behind us. If you've seen any photos online of interior Shargao, you've probably already seen this, but this is the Masan River rope swing. You can jump into the river and swing, or you can take a little boat ride down. Unfortunately, it's a Sunday in the afternoon, so it is super crowded. We are not going to get in the water today, but we'll come back on our last day in the morning when they told us to come check it out for no crowd. You can catch that footage right here. Final stop of the evening is here at Secret Beach. Definitely a good secret because it took us a few loops to find it, but we did eventually see a sign and we're on the path down. We made it down 
the secret beach. We pretty much have it to ourselves. There's a handful of other people here, and the views are so nice. Maybe not as iconic as Cloud Nine, but Secret Beach looks to also be a place where you can learn how to surf. And it has a lot more privacy, which I feel like can be really helpful if you're a beginner. Short stretch of beach that's kind of tucked under the palm trees. We're here right at sunset, which has a beautiful glow to it as well. Water is crystal clear. This, I think, is what you think of when you think of paradise. into a dress for a few pictures to take in this gorgeous view. <laughs> I've never changed before. I feel silly, but whatever. We are back. Ah! There it goes. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I don't even know if I got that on camera because I didn't have the viewfinder on, but we are back at Secret Beach and Kyle is, I was going to say attempting to surf, but he got up on his first wave. What the heck? He's crushing it. Last time I watched him, he got destroyed on some coral in Hawaii. So this is good redemption. <laughs> if you can't hear him, he's saying, what the heck was that? The first one, because he's so surprised he got up on the first one. <laughs> I love it. That was awesome. <laughs> That looks really cool. All right, Kyle wants me to fly the drone out there to try and uh, capture him surfing. And I've never flown the drone before, like literally never flown it before. And I'm doing it by myself on the beach with like minimal like talk through right beforehand. So wish me luck, hopefully I don't crash into the ocean. <laughs> adventure on the tuk-tuk here in Shargao and it was a lot of fun it was great to just do something a little different I am happy to say that we will be switching back to the motorbike we had our fun I'm definitely not quitting my day job and I am looking forward to being back on the motorbike tomorrow we turned in the tuk-tuk last night but we had one last destination that we wanted to visit here on the island of Shargao and there was kind of a particular reason that we didn't go there yesterday in the tuk-tuk. We're here at the rock pools on the island and you can only come here to see the rock pools at low tide because that's how the rock pools are actually formed. So we couldn't come yesterday because it was high tide. We would have just been looking at a beach, but we're back here today and you can already see that the rock pools are starting to form. This is our last morning here. So right now we're a couple hours before peak low tide but we're hoping that the recede works out just well enough for us to see them before we have to head to the airport. Let's go check it out. As the tide goes down, these little pools are formed by all of the rock and coral that's built up. So it's really nice because it's these little shallow areas that has perfectly clear water that you can kind of wade in. It's interesting because it's this huge flat shelf and then there's just a couple like really bigger, deeper pools that are created and it's the water is really nice and cool and refreshing to get into. Most of the ocean's been warm, but it's a little bit cooler down here. And this whole area is pretty built up too. There's a lot of tourism support. I will say, I don't think it's possible to beat the crowds like we all tend to try and do because you have to come here at low tide and that's only one time a day usually in the middle of the day. There is a website where you can check the tide so you can look at when it's going to be low tide and plan your trip around that. Behind me, you can see where there's a big kind of pool created from the tide going down. And then all the rest of this is almost dry. It's just flat rock with like a couple inches of water on it. 
Whoa, look how clear this is. Oh, and it's like nice and cold too. This is like better than swimming pools at home clear. Not to mention all these sweet rock formations in the background and everything. Palm trees and beach and ocean setting. Definitely see why this is popular. I know we're just like describing a tide pool, but even the little pockets of water with all the little neon colorful fish in there are really cool. I think because there's so much coral and everything, there's a lot of life around here. This is so pretty, I love this. It's like a cenote basically. This is our last morning here in Shargao and it's going to wrap up our time in the Philippines, which I'm so sad about because we have had such a blast. Throughout this trip, we've quickly been talking about the Philippines as being out there with one of our favorite countries, which is really an impossible question to answer, but I think the diversity of things that we've been able to do in the jungle, in the water, the waterfalls, the beach, it's just been incredible and we've had so much fun. And there are so many more islands that we've yet to explore, so you can guarantee that we will definitely be coming back in the future. It's definitely worth noting that the Philippines also has just some incredibly friendly people. I think we might have mentioned this throughout our videos, but anywhere that we stopped, drove by, people were waving, people were asking if we needed help, and they were just so excited to, to welcome you know guests to their country. And we really enjoyed the places that we stayed here. It was all very affordable and felt like luxury the whole time. And again, the staff are just so helpful and accommodating. I'm so sad to be leaving, but I will definitely be thinking about these islands for years to come. Make sure to subscribe to join us in our next country of Oman.